Hey, hey, Facebook family. Hey, hey, hey. Hey there, hey there, hey there. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, it is certainly my honor and privilege to come to you tonight for the first time in 2018. Yes, yeah, so uh, invite followers and let them know that we're on tonight. And I uh, certainly want to uh, say thank you for your prayers over the last several weeks uh, that I haven't been on on Tuesday. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, but I have been sick. Then I started feeling better. Then I got sick again. Um, so uh, here I am. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I'm not sure what happened and what I contracted, but thanks be unto God that he is a healer, right? Uh, so I'm feeling much better. So thank you all so much for your prayers and uh, happy new year. I hope that you feel this electricity in the air and the atmosphere, this energy uh, that is upon us. Uh, because this year is going to be epic. That's been that. That's my word for it. It's going to be epic. Uh, so I certainly want to uh, thank you all so much for joining. Hey there, my dear sister. Been praying for you and your family uh, since the passing of your mom, Sister Katrina. Uh, so thanks so much for joining tonight. And uh, I continue to lift you in prayer um, as you uh, put back together your your life, uh, creating a new normal, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you all so much for joining. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, so tonight I want to uh, talk uh, about setting yourself up for success in 2018. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks so much for joining everybody. Uh, tell somebody that we're on. Um, I have a word that I want to share with you all tonight. Uh, hey there, hey, hey, hey. Uh, and uh, I'm so excited about our time together. I never take this time for granted, nor do I take it lightly. So, yeah, so let me tell you a little bit about me. Yes, um, Nicole Mason, success strategist. Yes, helping women. Uh, and I know I have some men here, but my audience is women. Helping women to create success on their own terms. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, helping women to create success on their own terms. And so let's just talk a little bit about success. Um, and success is relative, meaning that what is what looks like success to you may not look like success to me. So um, um, the first thing that you need to do when you start to talk about setting yourself up for success for 2018 uh, is to determine what success looks like to you and what success means to you. That's so very important. Uh, and that is a foundational piece for uh, anybody who wants to be successful. Um, you have to figure out what it what it means to you. Uh, and I remember I was coaching a high powered woman who worked for the Obama administration. And uh, although she loved what she was doing, uh, her heart really was as an entrepreneur. And she was an event planner by trade. And that's really what she wanted to be doing. And so I helped her develop a plan uh, to implement and execute uh, once she left the Obama administration. Um, but I can tell you, um, when you are operating and working in a space that is, uh, thank you, when you are operating and working in a space uh, that is not conducive for what you have been called to do, what your purpose is, uh, it really drains the life out of you. Uh, and although all of the people around her were trying to figure out what the problem was, after all, you're working for the Obama administration, right? And although it was a, a plush assignment, um, she thoroughly enjoyed all of the people that she had access to, people she was working around, of course, uh, but her heart's desire uh, was not that. Uh, and she took the job so that she could do event planning for uh, the administration. But just as many jobs do, uh, the job morphed into something other than what she initially was hired to do. And so thus the drain, thus the unhappiness, thus the coaching uh, relationship with me developed as a result of that. Uh, and so uh, I want to just start off 
Good evening. I just want to start off tonight um, just really encouraging you as we are in the beginning uh, stages and days of 2018. I hope that many of you all are, are joining me on our 21 days of fasting and prayer where we're seeking God for uh, direction and strategy and clarity. Dr. Pam, hey, uh, um, for all of the things that we're looking for um, to guide us for 2018. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that's critically important is really to figure out what do you want to do? What is success for you? Because again, what success looks like looks like to me may not be what it looks like for you. Uh, and so I give that example of uh, the high powered woman that I was coaching uh, because uh, it's very important. It's not about the title that people have. It's not about the position and where they find themselves. You have some of the people, uh, some people who are in some of the uh, most loftiest positions, but yet that's not what their heart wants, where their heart wants to be. It's not what their purpose is. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be talking a lot about purpose and planning around purpose at my upcoming Blueprint for Success seminar, uh, and it's a seminar because it's much shorter than the workshop. Uh, so I certainly want to invite you to uh, join us for the seminar on Saturday, January 27th, and it's going to be held uh, at my uh, church, and uh, the cost is $47, and you can go to uh, paypal.me slash Nicole S. Mason slash 47. Um, but I'm telling you, our time together will be a tremendous blessing for you uh, as you come out of your time of fasting uh, with your roadmap and with your uh, plans from God. And you need somebody to help you to put that together and to really just kind of give you some feedback. And I can tell you uh, that God gives me tremendous downloads when I'm doing my workshops, when I'm doing my seminars, uh, and this will not be any different. So uh, come on and let me serve as your accountability partner on Saturday, January the 27th for our Blueprint for Success seminar. All right. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, setting yourself up for success. The first thing is you must determine what success looks like for you. All right. Uh, the second thing is your why must be bigger than the obstacles and the oppositions. Um, you have to have a why, why you want to be successful, why you want to do what you do, because I'm going to tell you when you start moving out to do anything that's positive, uh, you are going to experience obstacles, oppositions, um, roadblocks, detours, <laughs> uh, 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 um, whatever you can think of that will come before you to discourage you, to push you back, to make you turn around, to make you throw in the towel, uh, to make you say, that's all right. I don't want to do this. No, I'm not called for this. Uh, and so you have to have a big why. Uh, it is critically important that you understand why you do what you do. Uh, so many people are operating in the earth realm and they don't even understand why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, for many people, it's just the job and uh, for others, Others is they're doing what other people think um, would make them successful. No, uh, and this is why you have people who work jobs for 30 and 40 years. And then uh, when they retire or they get laid off, uh, they really come into understanding what their purpose is and what they're passionate about. Uh, I remember reading a story some time ago. Uh, for those that don't know me, I am uh, an avid reader. So I'm always reading something. I have books everywhere because I just love, love, love to read. And so um, I'll be reading five and six books at one time. Uh, but I was reading this book about this man who was a CEO um, making all kinds of money. Hey there, making all kinds of money but just wasn't fulfilled. And he uh, was invited to go on a missions trip um, with by another CEO. And he went on this missions trip and he uh, met this young boy who was not able to walk and did not have a walker. So really just kind of scooting around on the ground. Imagine that. And when he picked the little boy up and it was this story was so impactful for me. The little boy just held on to him. And of course, it made the man feel awkward because he's like, okay, let me go, you know. 
Um, and the little boy said, I want to hold on to you as long as I can, because I want to look at your face and study it and remember it when I get to heaven, because you're an angel. And the man was just, of course, broken up behind it uh, because he was going with his other friend who was providing wheelchairs for the for the children in this particular third world country. They did not have wheelchairs. And it was at that moment uh, the CEO recounted that he knew uh, what his purpose was. And so he came back to the U.S., and he quit the CEO job. It was his company, right? Uh, and so he quit the CEO job, put it into the hands of someone else, and he took his wealth and he created an organization that now provides wheelchairs uh, to children all over the country, uh, that particular country. And he's purchased somewhere around 300,000 wheelchairs uh, for people who need them. Uh, and so, you know, it is very, very important that your why um, is bigger than your obstacles and oppositions. I can also use myself as an example. You all know I use myself in my life um, to uh, show what I'm talking about. So, you know, uh, I encourage and empower women and men, right? Because I have men that come onto the broadcast and I also have men on my mailing list. And uh, and so, but my audience is of course women and really empowering women uh, to be who God created them to be without apology. You know, helping women to create success on their own terms and to live boldly and, you know, come out from behind the scenes in their own lives. You know, God did not create us to be uh, supporting actresses and actors in our own lives. Are you kidding me? No, <laughs> he created us to be main characters in our lives, right? Uh, and so, you know, I've met, I can't tell you how many people I've met, predominantly women, who always talk about, oh, I don't like to be out in the front. You know, I'm behind the scenes kind of person. Okay, whatever. Uh, the reality is you're not going to be great in your own life behind the scenes. It just doesn't work. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, and so, hello, hola, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, in order for you to do great things, and that does not mean that your name will be up in lights and that, you know, you will have major platforms. No. Uh, and I know that to be so because my grandmother was a great woman uh, and, you know, she didn't have a famous name, but she was famous to me. Yes. Edna Maynard. Uh, she was a huge, larger than life force in my life. Um, because of her character and because of her work ethic and because of her wisdom uh, and because of her faith. And um, I watched her uh, work this business that she had. And by the time she retired, she had worked that business for over 50 years, day in and day out. So much so that we had to convince her after a while uh, not to work on Sundays, right? Uh, and so it, greatness does not mean equal or does not mean or equal fame. Greatness means that you are making impact and that you are making a difference in the lives of others. Uh, and that's what's most important. And so for me, uh, it's about empowering women to be their best selves and to live boldly and unapologetically on uh, the lives that they were created to live. Uh, because I feel like when a woman is healed and whole and confident and competent and courageous, uh, that her children uh, stand a better chance coming out the gate uh, to live that kind of way. And I'm a product of that. My mom was all of those things. Uh, and I'm a product of that. My grandmother was all of those things. And I'm a product of that. So um, for me, my why is to impact the lives of women because I understand that it is a ripple effect that when the woman is healed and whole and bold and living out loud and living her life in color, not only do her children benefit, but everybody in her sphere of influence benefits from that kind of living. Uh, and so when I wanted to throw in the towel, when I wanted to quit, all of those things, we all have them. When I felt discouraged over the years, uh, when I felt rejected, when I felt frustrated, because everybody's not going to get you. <laughs> everybody's not going to get you and you might as well get over it, right? Everybody's not going to be on board with you. Uh, and so you might as well get over that and keep going. 
Everybody's not going to like you. <laughs> so you might as well get over that, right? Everybody's not going to be cheering for you. So you might as well get over that. This is why you have to learn how to cheer for yourself. Yes. <laughs> Y'all know I'll stop preaching in a minute. Okay. I'm trying not to preach. I'm just talking to you. <laughs> uh, this is why you have to celebrate yourself. Uh, that is critically important. You have to celebrate yourself. Uh, when I'm at any kind of an event, corporate setting, uh, preaching, it doesn't matter. When they call my name, I scream for myself. Yes. Uh, and I start off by saying, listen, if nobody else would celebrate you, at least you celebrate yourself, right? Uh, and so throughout the years, um, when I have felt discouraged and, um, you know, frustrated and all of the things that go along with building something, uh, whether you're building a business, building a ministry, building a brand, building yourself, whatever you're building, um, there are going to be moments when you just say, is it really worth it? And this is when your why has to overcome all of those emotions because they're just emotions, right? Uh, I've taught the ladies in my space that you have to, um, uh, uh, the facts have to uh, override the emotions. Listen, we all know that our emotions will get us jacked up. Yes. Uh, our emotions have led us down the wrong path, all right? Our emotions have led us down the wrong path. Our emotions have led us into the wrong hands, to the wrong arms, to the wrong spaces and places. I'll leave that right there, right? That's a, another conversation for another time, but you certainly get me. When your emotions are ruling you as opposed to the facts, you'll end up in the wrong places, and uh, that will just keep you in a downward spiral in your life. And this is why you have to know who you are uh, and whose you are. And you have to understand the power that lies within you to do whatever it is uh, that you have been created to do. Uh, and so your why has to be bigger than the obstacles, uh, has to be bigger than the oppositions. Listen, I understand that I am on a mission. That's right. <laughs> That's one of my babies, Ladaya, to the wrong joker. Yes, or joke, joke est, right? No, what did I call the woman? Joker and joke est. Yes, uh huh. Right. So you've got to get to the place where you understand why you want to be successful. What success looks like you? What success looks like to you? So my first point is you must determine what success looks like to you. And then two, your why must be greater than, stronger than the obstacles and oppositions that will present themselves, right? And then uh, number three, you have to follow through and you must be persistent. That, I mean, you know, you have to be persistent. You have to be consistent as well. Um, consistent means, of course, that you just continue to show up over and over and over again. Um, persistent means you don't take no for an answer. Uh, and all of those things, all of those parts you need um, when you start to talk about being successful in whatever it is that uh, God has called you to do. Uh, you have to be persistent and consistent, right? Uh, and I had an experience today of being persistent. And uh, I have to tell you, um, because I'm an only child, uh, there have been times over the course of my life that I haven't always been persistent when it came to opportunities, you know, because I'm a loner, really. <laughs> and um, I'm a loner because I grew up by myself. And so my books became my friends, right? Writing became my friend. And so all of those things are things that I still do now. Uh, and you might be able to relate to it. So, you know, if you give me a book, I can stay in the house for weeks and read and not talk to a soul, <laughs> right? Not talk to a soul. Um, and that just comes from my orientation in life, my environment, you know, being an only child. And so, um, I've had to overcome, uh, those parts of me that would keep me in a status quo that would keep me in my comfort zone. Cause that's really my comfort zone. Although I am very bold and bodacious in personality, uh, you know, but my environment is one that I can just be 
in the house just reading and I'm okay. I don't need a TV or anything. Uh, and so uh, I really had to overcome that. And so, of course, uh, God has a great sense of humor because he has me in the house with all of this testosterone, <laughs> right? I'm the only woman up in here. Uh, and so something is always on in the house. So I have to create my quiet space. Uh, and so I think that that's just God's way of just saying, girl, you know, it's a balance, right? It's a balance. But I had this um, example I wanted to share with you. So uh, the Lord gave me a download about this opportunity that he wanted me to go after. And so I sent an email uh, to uh, the woman and she said uh, initially, you know, no uh, to my question to her. I was like, okay. Uh, and so before Christmas, I sent another follow-up, you know, uh, it has the opportunity become available. She's like, no, I'm like, okay. So after the new year, I sent her an email a couple of days ago, you know, has the opportunity become available? Guess what she said? Yes. All right. Yes. Now, let me say this. It wasn't the way that I wanted it. It wasn't the question that I posed, but it was a yes. And so immediately I asked if I could come in and talk with her one on one, because one thing that I know about myself is I just need the door to open. Once the door opens, I will go in. OK, and I will take it from there. And so she was like, yes. I can come in and meet with her next week. Yes. Yay. Uh, and so looking forward to sharing that great opportunity uh, in the next couple of weeks. But that was just being persistent. Now, I'm very consistent as it relates to the things that I do, the things that I've been called to do. And why is that? Because I can do those at home, you know, to prepare myself to go out. I can prepare my sermons at home. I can prepare whatever inspirational speech. Um, I can write from at home, from home. You know, I can do all those things from home. So I've been consistent, um, you know, and of course, if anybody calls me to preach, I'm there, you know, because uh, that's something I love to do. I know I was born to do it. Uh, but when you start talking about really going after opportunities, um, you know, that takes you coming out of your comfort zone. Again, going back to the why, because my why now has grown because my platform has grown. Uh, and so I have to do more to get my name out there to make God's name great. Yes, to speak well of him. Uh, and I can't just do that uh, just sitting here uh, because God keeps expanding my territory. So I have to um take those steps and take those leaps uh, that don't always feel comfortable. And I'll share this with you. And uh, I want to uh, give you some time to ask me any questions if you have them. Uh, the time all, always goes by very quickly. I like to come on into about 30 minutes. So I'm almost uh, there. I have about 10 minutes left. But I want to share with you uh, this powerful lesson that uh, God taught me about not being persistent when he speaks. All right. So a couple of years back, um, one of uh, President Obama's um, spiritual advisors who wrote a book, um, I forgot his name now, but he would send President Obama an email every day to encourage him, even before he became president. It was just something that the Lord laid on his heart. He started to do it. Um, and, though, and then when President Obama was elected, he took this guy with him into his administration as his spiritual advisor. Well, I read about him in the Washington Post and the Lord told me specifically to send him a copy of my book, um, um, Morning uh, Meditations. And I sat on it. Yeah, I sat on it. Wasn't persistent, right? And I kept in my mind saying, I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it. And I just wasn't persistent. And would you know, Two weeks later, who shows up at my church <laughs> but this guy promoting his book? And as I sat there, when I told you, I was devastated. I was devastated. And that was a poignant lesson for me. And I want you to take that lesson because that was a missed opportunity. Now, don't judge me. Yeah, because everybody that's watching this broadcast has had a missed opportunity or two or three or four or five, right? 
But that has stuck with me. So when God tells me now to do something, no matter how crazy it may sound to me or feel to me, I'm doing it. Just like I reached out to this woman about this opportunity and she gave me two no's before she gave me a, a yes on the third go round. Absolutely. Persistence. And so I want you to uh, take uh, these few steps to heart. Uh, we're going to be talking. Yes. <laughs> Minister Tanisha. Yes. Uh, and so I want you to take these few steps to heart. Um, we're going to be talking more about this in the Blueprint for Success seminar. It's a seminar because it's shorter than my workshop. And um, it's going to be on Saturday, January 27th from 9 to 1230 at my church. And um, uh, that's 610 Rhode Island Avenue Northeast, one of the uh, classrooms there. Um, we'll be using that facility. And uh, we originally had it scheduled um, at another location, but they had a pipe that burst it. And so uh, they're moving me across the street. All right. So uh, to that end, um, I hope these few nuggets have been helpful to you on how to set yourself up for success. Again, let me go over the points that I shared tonight. Number one, first you must determine what success looks like to you. That's number one. And then number two, your why must be bigger than and greater than and stronger than the obstacles and the oppositions that you will encounter and you will face along the way. <clears throat> and then number three, you have to follow through. You must be persistent and consistent. And I hope the examples that I've used from my own life have been a blessing to you and um, have in, encouraged you. So I just want to uh, open up the floor to see if there are any questions for me. Um, one of the things that I am um, certain about is that for me to serve as your accountability partner, as your success coach, uh, I am the one for it. Um, I always t uh, talk about the fact that I applied to law school nine times and was rejected nine times. And then on the 10th time, I was accepted because I just wouldn't take no for an answer. Again, um, I could do that because I could do that in the comfort of my home. I could write the application and, you know, write my essays. Uh, and so that comes much more natural to me than being persistent, you know, picking up the phone, you know, reaching out to somebody. And you know what that is tied to? Rejection. Um, you know, we don't want to be rejected. And um, uh, I know for me uh, that that spirit of rejection, I have to be very, very mindful of it, even to this day, um, because I've experienced it over the course of my life. And, uh, and so I have to, you know, put fact over emotion, like I just said earlier. You know, the fact of the matter is I am blessed, highly favored by God. Uh, the emotion says, oh, don't do it because they might reject you. But the fact of the matter is, uh, when God is for you, who can be against you? The fact of the matter is, if they reject me, that wasn't the opportunity for me. If they reject me, they're lost. You know, all of those things are facts. And so we have to get to the place where um, we override our emotions with the facts uh, and this is why we have to know the word of God and to be able to build ourselves up in our most holy faith uh, and to be able to implement and execute uh, what it is that God has called us to do. Uh, and our why has to be bigger than, stronger than, greater than the obstacles and the oppositions that will present themselves, including us, right? I remember uh, co-pastor Deborah Morton telling me years ago, we were riding in the car together and she said, baby, you have to learn how to rebuke yourself. <laughs> I will never forget that. And that is so true. And I have walked with that wisdom since that day. You have to learn how to rebuke yourself. Co-Pastor Deborah Morton. Uh, and so uh, I want to open up the floor. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, does anybody have a question? Uh, that you would like to pose to me as it relates to setting yourself up for success in 2018. So um, while you get your questions in the chat box, uh, I will uh, also share with you again the Blueprint for Success seminar, Saturday, January 27th. The cost is $47. You can do paypal.me slash Nicole S. Mason slash 47 uh, and it'll come right up. 
And um, I certainly encourage you to be in the room. It's going to be an awesome time. And um, I can tell you that uh, God has blessed me and gifted me to um, be able to share right in the moment on the spot when people start to talk about their purpose. And I'm able to get downloads from God uh, to help them to um, formulate the purpose, to um, you know, hone the purpose and to give action steps and strategies for um, the steps that they can take. And so I want to encourage you to make plans to join me on Saturday, January 27th. Also, if you want to join my mailing list, you can do that by going to NicoleSMason.com, N-I-C-O-L-E-S Mason.com, and you can join our mailing list. And finally, um, as I wrap up, I wanted to see if there were any questions about your success in 2018, setting yourself up for success in 2018. Finally, I certainly want to invite you, if you have not been joining us, for our 21 days of fasting and prayer. And um, God is blessing us tremendously. I want to encourage you to go back and uh, listen to the playback. Uh, of each of the days so far. We have had guest intercessors and um, we are not done. We're going until the 22nd. We are praying uh, every morning at 5.30 a.m. Eastern um, Standard Time and the number is 641-715-3580 and the passcode is 150061-POUND. Okay, again, it's 641-715-3580 and the passcode is 150061-POUND. Okay, so um, please join us and um, I know that you will be tremendously blessed. All right, so one last time, uh, are there any questions around success? Um, any questions you might have? And if you want to send them to me via inbox on Facebook, that's fine. You can do it there. Uh, sometimes we have questions and um, I certainly want to encourage you to join me for my seminar. You can certainly ask questions there um, in a, a much more intimate setting. All right. So um, it is 830. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Uh, Minister Tanisha, can you put the number in for the prayer call or Minister Mary um, so that people can have it? 641-715-3580 and the passcode is 150061-POUND. All right, great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, all right, so thanks so much you all for joining me and thanks for praying for me. Um, I said at the top of the uh, um, Facebook Live session that I've been sick uh, so I hadn't been on for the past couple of weeks. I was sick. I started to feel better. Then I started to feel sick again. Then I started to feel better. Then a couple of days ago, I started to feel sick again. So whatever this strain of whatever this is going around, we certainly come together and rebuke it, right? In the name of Jesus. All right. Uh, so I'm feeling good. And um, thank you all again so much for uh, popping on to uh, join with me tonight on Setting yourself up for success in 2018. All right? Peace.